Welcome to Eyes Open. Today is December 12th, 2019. I'm Eric Smith, and on this station I'm going to be interviewing Julie Rowe. Julie Rowe is a feisty, spunky friend of mine from the heartland of America <laughs> who has special gifts. Uh, she's a visionary woman. She sees things past, present, and future. She's a best-selling author of a book. She has had numerous near-death experiences and has seen many things that are special that relate to the future of Americans, to people all over the world. And I believe she has a very special story to, st to tell and a message to share. And so that's why we started this channel. Julie, welcome. Thank you for putting yourself out there and being willing to go on this show. Thanks, Eric Smith. It's an honor to be on here. I'm excited. I've waited a long time to be able to help get the message out. And um, so fair game, whatever you want to ask. <laughs> okay, sounds good. My hope uh, in this first episode or first several episodes is to introduce you to your audience. I need them to understand you, your heart, your background, your experiences, your abilities. Uh, one of the objectives we have both talked about and have agreed to is, and the something that we're both passionate about, is exposing darkness, hidden agendas, and infusing light into this world and, um, right. and truth. And that really is the foundation. I hope that we can always come back to that as we proceed. Our intention also is to keep these very brief. We know people are busy um, and we want to provide concentrated truth in a, in a number of issues. So first, Julie, if you don't mind, I'd like to ask you some questions. I'm going to put you on the spotlight here. And okay. I'd like to understand and have your audience understand more about your gifts or your abilities as far as, you know, maybe what might be considered unusual to people. And my understanding is I've gotten to know you. Is this started at a young age for you? Is that right? Um, since I came to the planet, my earliest memories. Mm -hmm. I, I have memories of um, being very, very young and having, I guess you could say, everything from angelic ministrations. And the veil just being thin. Like, I just came to this planet with a thin veil. So. Right. I guess people don't know what that term is. It just basically means like I can um, sometimes see angels or ancestors from the other side of the veil. Um, I can, uh, anyway, we can go into all that, but people don't always know what it means to have a thin veil. But when I say the veil's thin, that's what I mean. That uh, heaven is very close. The spirit realm is close to me and um, I can see, hear, smell, you know, them. That's how I've come to see you, is your senses. All of your senses are astute and keen. And um, and I've heard you talk about all your senses, vision, sight, smell, and so forth. But I've also come to see that those are multidimensional, which I don't think I myself right. fully understand. But I've heard you describe things, and I'm like, she's seeing something that isn't really known to people. Um, and I'm hoping yeah. we can get into that a little bit, too. Yeah. Well, you know, for a long time, scientists would tell us that we live in a three-dimensional world, and there were like five dimensions, maybe six dimensions, and I'm like, oh, we've got hundreds of dimensions within our uh, so-called space, but there's just kind of time-space overlap thing that happens in eternity. Right. And so I might use, I use verbiage that your average person doesn't, I mean, I just talk weird. <laughs> Because I'm in a, a different place. I'm kind of between worlds. i got one, one foot on both sides, if you will. So. Right. Well, I hope to um, dive deeper into what some of those things are, what those mean. Because I honestly don't know what some of it means. Um, and, and I want to get, dig into your mind and your understanding and pull that out so other people can see that as well. Let's yeah. let's go back. Let's go back to some of the earliest memories you have in your life. And um, can you share an experience or a time maybe when you first started understanding that you were a little bit different than your peers or other people or your family members? Well, the first memory I have actually was before I even understood um, or had a context or anything other than like my family. But I was 
my mom was a school teacher and my dad was in the military. When I was two and a half years old, my dad joined the military. And um, so I, I was raised as a military dependent in the army. And we were living at um, his, his first assignment in Fort Hood, Texas. I remember um, as early as being 10 months old, which is going to sound strange to people, but I also have memory of being in the womb and some other things that, you know, you just don't find on the planet. Uh, but, but one example is that I was a, about a year and a half old, 16 months old, and had a babysitter. And my mom would leave to go to work. She's, a, like I said, a teacher. And uh, on a particular day, I didn't care for how this lady treated us. And I was cognizant, even at a young age, that what she was saying to me or my brother or my sister or the other kids that she was babysitting um, wasn't always kind. And it would hurt my heart, and I would cry. And I actually had a comprehension even at that young age that that was the correlation that was making that was what was making me sad and I remember that I had um I I had visitors from the other side of the veil that would comfort me when she would neglect me because quite frankly that's what she did my mom would leave for work she'd put on her happy face and pretend she was this nice lady and then she would yell and scream at us or neglect us and you know do whatever she was going to do throughout the day and um, I trapped a lot of negative energy in that short amount of time where she was our babysitter. And on one particular day, um, I watched her beat my sister. My sister was three and she had bruises on her back. And I sobbed my eyes out. And I remember being frustrated that I couldn't tell my parents what had happened because I didn't have the language skills in mortality to express what I could hear and thought and what I could hear and see from angelic family members um, guarding angels on the other side of the veil and being so frustrated that I was in this body <laughs> and I was this little kid and I had no way to tell the people that could help what had happened. Huh. And um, so that's just, that's my first example of being maybe old enough to understand. And, and, and most people, I think they start having memories when they're four or five, six years old. But for me, I, I literally came to the planet with just a different body um, and a different situation. Uh, the next one is probably when I was three. And I don't know, you know, I've talked about that. I don't know if we want to talk about that story of the bird. At Go all ahead. Or... Let's, let's hear about this.